Uh, I'm really honored today to have the opportunity to participate in this five workshop. My name is Peng Li, and I am the manager of the calculation group uh, at the NanoFab Center, the University of Alberta, Edmonton, Canada. In this talk, I will be sharing our great experience of the newly installed WASA Probe 3 scanning probe uh, XPS systems from five. In terms of the capabilities and its applications in a shared facility environment, uh, but mainly from the two owners' point of view. Uh, first, I would like to provide a very brief overview of our organization. The NanoFab Center is an open access facility to provide training, service, and collaboration for both academic and industrial group um, in the area of nanoscale fabrication and calculation. Now here is a glancing of our overall operations. Uh, we are the largest academic clean room and calculation group in Canada. Now we have over $100 million worth of equipment, infrastructure, and operation. Uh, we have a team of 16 staff members to support over 200 individual equipment. Uh, we have slightly over $2 million yearly operation budget. We open 24-7. And the last will show some numbers uh, to highlight uh, the volume of the work we support our user community uh, in terms of the total logged in equipment hours, number of samples we run uh, for our user group, uh, and also the individual users has been working in the facility in the last year and also the last month. I just like to highlight here, and then in general, uh, in average, we run over 300 samples uh, for our user by our staff member in a month. Um, in the calculation lab, uh, we are well equipped with a suite of microscopy and spectroscopy equipment. They're including SEM, PM, XPS, OJ, and Robin, and XRD, and, uh, any, uh, and also other commonly used analytical equipment. And also we are working constantly to bring in new capability and instrumentation um, based on the demand from our user community. In the current roadmap, we're working to bring on 3D uh, visualization uh, and also for the dynamic uh, like analytical capabilities. Among the uh, spectroscopic lab, um, the XPS system um, has been uh, played an important role to support the research need from our user community. Uh, we have been serving um, the XPS analysis in the past two decades. Uh, we have a um, uh, spectrometer uh, from another vendor. Recently, we have installed a VP3 system from FI uh, to bring down the advanced capabilities uh, that we didn't have before, uh, mainly on the imaging and the depth profiling um, um, analysis uh, in order to, to meet the demand uh, from our user groups. Uh, in the following slide, uh, I'm going to present some application examples to highlight uh, how this system um, is configured and also uh, how utilized uh, to help our users uh, to calculate their new materials uh, or solve problems from their fabrication process uh, and all from their devices. The VPC system was installed earlier this year, um, which is a speedy and smooth process. And here shows a time-lapse photo of the installation. And here on the left side, that shows how the lab looks like right now. The installation completed in January earlier this year, and we opened the user training uh, in March. 
after that, our team has been working with the application team from FI uh, for the advanced training uh, remotely due to the pandemic. Uh, however, that's working um, very well. So far, the applications we have on the VP system are the imaging uh, and also set specific analysis, depth profiling, and also automatic uh, and also correlative analysis. So the normal XPS and UPS analysis would on still on the other systems. The VP3 system uh, utilizes a raster scan X-ray beam for imaging and probing applications. Um, the X-ray probe induces secondary electron images and known as SXI, provide a very easy of use workflow uh, and also um, precess sample positioning. The ultimate spatial resolution is determined by the X-ray probe size. The standard specs guarantee uh, less than 10 micron probe size uh, well, we can routinely get a useful probe um, as small as seven micrometer, just as the, the graph shows here. In order to assess the imaging performance of the system, we have fabricated uh, some standard samples. Um, as the SEM images shows here is a gold pad uh, with a different size uh, on a silicon substrate. And the bottom uh, shows the, the gold pad with a size uh, from a few micron to a few tens of microns. Here is the SXI image of the 10 micron and 20 micron uh, gold squares. Um, the mapping of the silicon 2P uh, and also gold 4F uh, clearly revealed uh, the 10 micron gold square. And those chips uh, turned out very useful not only for um, XPS analysis and also for other analytical equipment. And then and, um, um, it's available with a different uh, material and different sizes through us and also through FI. The depth profiling analysis is one of the major applications on the VP3 system. We configure two spectral guns, mono argon and GCIB. I'm going to sh show two examples um, done by uh, the mono argon uh, spectral gun. The first example here is the analysis of an ALD film stack. This is actually part of the equipment evaluation uh, for the ALD uh, tool acquisition for our clean room. A uh, test sample of silicon nitride and carbon oxide uh, film stacks uh, were made on silicon subject. Each layer uh, has about 30 nanometer in thickness. So the evaluation uh, focuses on the layer thickness and sharpness of the interfaces, uh, and most important is the oxygen concentration in the silicon nitride layer. So the spatter process were the um, two kilowatt uh, argon um, spatter gun. Uh, below shows the result from three different vendors. Um, they shows very similar result in terms of the layer thickness uh, and also the interface uh, sharpness. However, they show very different uh, oxygen concentration in the silicon nitride layers. Um, the oxygen uh, profile was highlighted in red. Um, we can see from vendor A, there is absolutely no oxygen in the nitride layer. In vendor B, there are very little, um, but in vendor C, uh, they have a very high concentration uh, up to 20%. So this actually um, make a very easy comparison uh, of the equipment performance of the ALD system. The second example is how the depth profiling analysis 
helps diagnose a failure of a capacitor device. And here shows the photo of the device chip and also optical images of individual um, capacitor. Uh, here is the SXI image. And we can see uh, the device has a lateral dimension less than 100 micron. The device consists of uh, a series of e uh, film stacks from top is 140 nanometer ruthenium, and then 10 nanometer silicon nitride, 100 nanometer garden nitride. The device didn't really behave as expected, um, so we tried to do a spatter uh, theory um, profile uh, to find the reason. Just because of the relative thick layer of ruthenium on the top, uh, we do the spatter in two steps. The first is with two kilowatt argon, and then once we approach to the thin silicon nitride layer, we lower the beam energy to one kilowatt uh, to get higher resolution. And here uh, is the overall profile of all the elements. And if we zoom in in the interface between silicon nitride and gallium nitride, we can find, find there is obvious oxygen concentration there. So this is actually caused the problem. And again, uh, the oxygen probably come from the deposition process as well. As mentioned, uh, we have a large base of industrial groups here. Most of them are semiconductor MEMS manufactured. So automatic workflow and unattended data acquisition is really desired for their QC and QA uh, process for their production runs. The point generation and image registration functions available on the VP3 system provide a perfect solution for that. And here uh, I will show an example of the workflow in, analy in analysis of an optical MEMS device. So here shows an optical image of the uh, device chip. And in the center, um, it has an, uh, an array of metal and oxide dots uh, with a diameter of 50 micron to 60 micron. And then the idea here will be set up an automatic procedure uh, to get the analysis of each individual dots. So, th so the way to do it uh, with the point generation function, we can generate a list of positions. So as indicated in the blue dots here, and then the, with the image registration function that will correct any drift or any other position error from the uh, stage movement so that the analysis um, will be done on the top uh, of the DOS. So in this particular drawing, uh, we set up a 10 by 10 point array and the one of the uh, uh, information uh, collected is the uh, platinum 4F. Uh, picks. Uh, see, the analysis time of each dose uh, took um, less than six minutes, uh, including the image registration. So the total time for this 100 point is about 12 hours. So the process was done completely unattended. Um, here shows the result. Um, 10 out of the uh, 100 um, spectrum of platinum 4F are plotted here. Um, the confidence value from each location from the drift correction also plotted. They're in the, um, they're above uh, 80% um, in average. Uh, also the XY offset of each location uh, also plotted here, and we can see it is below 10 or 50 micron for y, for x and y direction. Although the SXI images are very helpful for sample partitioning, it doesn't work very well for some type of sample. 
due to the limitation of spatial resolution and contrast is provided. In which case, we will have to work together with other techniques to get the information we need. Here I show example of correlative analysis of mineral sample by SEM EDX and XPS. The sample is a polished mineral sample. And first, um, we put into SEM, and then the ROI is allocated uh, with the imaging and EDX. Then the sample load into the XPS system with some fiducial mark uh, made uh, previously, the identical area can be found very easily. And then a depth profile was performed. Um, the, most the most important information um, we found is the surface is highly uh, oxidized for this particular uh, example. Charging is a common issue in XPS analysis for insulation samples. A common way to neutralize charge is using a single low energy electron source. This is the case uh, on the other XPS system we have. It's working well for flood sample. The VP3 system utilizes a dual charge neutralizer together with an electron source and also a low energy positive ion source, which provides a very stable and reliable charging neutralizing and is independent uh, from the sample topography. Here shows a uh, comparison of charge neutralizing uh, between the VP3 uh, and the other XPS system. Uh, the sample is a cotton. Uh, there's no special sample uh, preparation was made. Um, it didn't really show much difference from uh, the carbon one ice peak. However, the oxygen one ice peak uh, obtained from the VP3, which is in red, um, is much better uh, than the blue curve, which is obtained from the other XPS using a single uh, source charge neutralizer. In summary, the Western probe uh, XPS system provide very versatile capabilities for a broad range of applications, including material science, geology, agriculture, and biology. The advanced features uh, provided from the system uh, cater for both academic and industrial need. We already have a system running for over half a year, uh, and there are a lot of more to develop further, uh, including correlative microscopy, spectroscopy, uh, and also depth profiling of hybrid system, uh, including organic and inorganic materials uh, by using both the monoargon and GCIB spectral bands, uh, and also dynamic XPS analysis. To conclude my presentation, uh, I'd like to thank our colleagues at FI again for the great opportunities to present our work in this event. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our uh, Nanofab team uh, who contribute to the work, especially Drs. Shi Hongxi and Amy Yu, who are the staff member working on the VP3 system.